dollars on Montana's closely watched U.S. Senate contest, a new record for a single election here. Democratic incumbent John Tester's campaign has outraised Republican Matt Rosendale's campaign by $14 million, but conservative and Republican Party groups have spent almost $21 million on ads, mailers, and other activity this year to help even the playing field, supporting Rosendale or attacking Senator Tester. And that amount doesn't include the cost of President Trump and Vice President Mike Pence visiting the state a half dozen times to stump for Rosendale. Some of the big spenders on behalf of Rosendale include the National Republican Senatorial Committee at $4.7 million, Club for Growth Action at $3.7 million, the Republican Senate Leadership Fund nearly $3 million, and a pair of PACs supported by Illinois billionaire donor Richard Uline, Restoration PAC and America's PAC, which have spent $3.7 million combined. All told, 22 separate groups have spent on behalf of Rosendale. But protester groups are not sitting on the sidelines. 18 of these groups have spent almost $13 million, primarily attacking Rosendale. They include the Democratic Party groups Senate Majority PAC and Majority Forward, who've spent a collective $6 million, environmental group the League of Conservation Voters at nearly $2 million, and a group called End Citizens United, whose goal is to oppose unlimited money in politics, but it spent $2.2 million to help tester. Montana State University political scientist David Parker says while these groups are spending big, the monetary advantage probably still goes to Tester with his substantial campaign fund. That's because candidates' campaigns pay lower rates for broadcast ads, so their money goes further. Montana's U.S. House race between Republican Congressman Greg Gianforte and Democrat Kathleen Williams also has seen some outside spending, but only about $400,000, and most of that on behalf of Williams. And with just six days until the election, what money's left to be spent will be chasing those few undecided voters who may decide both these races. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Of course, the president is coming to Bozeman on Saturday, and Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport is beefing up security in preparation for the president's visit. The president is expected to arrive at the airport in the late morning. The rally is expected to start at 12.30. For passengers flying in and out of Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport, you can expect about a 15-minute delay if you're arriving or departing during that time. The airport is well-equipped to support Air Force One, but Airport Director Brian Springer says that his biggest concern is managing the traffic for the event. And with this event being at the east side of the airport off of Airport Road, that helps us a whole lot in separating passenger traffic uh, from the uh, event traffic. Uh, so, you know, it's one of those things, though, that uh, we recommend people planning extra time to get to the airport. And Springer says the airport parking lot will not be used for people going to President Trump's rally. A section of road is uh, replacing a section of road, not something that the State Department of Transportation does in October very often, but a section of US 89 just north of Gardner is not your ordinary road project. As MTN's Chet Lehman shows us, MDT replaced an entire section of highway in just three hours and will have to do it again in six months. Crews gathering behind me, getting ready to make a little bit of a change to uh, US 89 at the mouth of the Yankee Jim Canyon. See, the work they're doing here by the Montana Department of Transportation isn't about cars. This is about wildlife. This cattle guard is actually a bison guard. Yellowstone National Park bison roam north each year during the winter looking for food in the Gardner Valley and many of them will wander this far north. The cattle guard will keep them from getting into the road in a the Yankee Jim Canyon and becoming a traffic hazard for cars passing back and forth throughout here throughout the winter. Very few other places will you find sections of road stacked next to the road, but that's what happens here twice a year as the Montana Department of Transportation changes from road to cattle guard, then in the spring, cattle guard back to paved road. In the Yankee Jim Canyon, Chet Lehman, MTN News. By the way, Chet tells us this entire project took about three months, three hours, excuse me, to complete. Up next on KBZK, how to cash in on those Halloween goodies and make a difference at the same time. And coming up in sports, we're going to introduce you to this week's Athlete of the Week.
Powered by the Montana Television Network. The 530 News continues on KBZK, Montana's news leader. Here's the latest Market Watch from KBZK. On Halloween for the past eight years, orthodontist Dr. Jeremy Sayer and his staff have paired up with Adopt a Socks to collect candy for Montana soldiers, and this year is no different. After Halloween, we have about, oh, I think it's five or six days where our office is open. People can bring their candy in. We'll give each kid $2 per pound of candy, and then we also donate $2 to the school that they attend. So during business hours, um, they're welcome to come. We'd like for them to get involved. And it's a great program. It's been a great program for us because we value our community. We value patients. Uh, we value kids. We value schools. And we value our troops. And uh, Cash for Candy has allowed us to be involved in all four of those areas. We would love the whole community to show up and participate. I like it. Dr. Sayers' office will be collecting candy starting tomorrow, November 1st through Thursday, November 8th. And they're located at 115 West Keggy Boulevard near Keggy Corner and Rose's Pizza. And a heads up, they are closed on Fridays. Back in September, a long dormant pool sprang to life in Yellowstone National Park's Upper Geyser Basin. And today, the park showed 60 years worth of debris that that geyser spat out when it shot 30 feet into the air. Now, the ground around the geyser and even a nearby boardwalk was showered with old coins, cans, combs, even a baby pacifier from the 1930s. Normally, Air Spring only shoots water about a couple of feet into the air, but this eruption was the biggest since 1957, and the whole thing was caught on uh, the Old Faithful webcam. In a Facebook live stream, park rangers showed off some of the old relics that popped out of that geyser. We have a Ham's beer can with a zip top style pull tab. So these types of pull tabs were uh, started being manufactured pre-1962. Debris might be an archeological treasure trove, park rangers say. Throwing things like that into a geyser is among the worst things you can do when checking out the thermal areas in Yellowstone National Park. And that vent gets narrower and narrower and narrower when the vent becomes completely plugged, as it has in several springs in the park, then, um, then the spring can actually plug up to the point where it's not a hot spring anymore and it'll, it'll go dormant. And just so you know, the rangers say high water levels due to recent uh, wet winters is driving all the renewed geyser activity. They say it does not indicate a change in the volcanic plume that heats the park from miles beneath the surface. Back over to Mike Hurd one more time for another check on your scary forecast. <laughs> well, speaking of wet weather, let's check out some of the mountain passes around the region, picking up plenty of hit and miss snow. We got wet roads that will likely be icing up overnight and into early tomorrow morning. That includes uh, near the Ennis area and farther south over Reynolds Pass. They're picking up quite a bit of slushy snow accumulations as of right now. Winter weather advisories will go over next after the break.
Now, here's your Storm Tracker weather forecast with meteorologist Mike Hurd. Today's the beginning of many wet weather days to come. We're still tracking a long fetch of tropical moisture moving up and over a high pressure ridge. So the next weather maker is just about to hit the coast and this will be impacting Montana's weather late tomorrow afternoon, evening into Friday morning. But we're dealing with the first round of wet weather and it's a northwesterly flow and it's dropping quite a bit of mostly snow through the region. And again, this will have some impacts on travel. So we have advisories above 6,000 feet uh, extending from just south of Great Falls, Kings Hill Pass, Bozeman Pass, Norris Hill, Reynolds Pass, Big Sky, West Yellowstone, accumulating snow likely. West Yellowstone possibly around two to three inches of snow tonight into tomorrow morning, but Bozeman Pass, uh, I think four to eight is very high, but I do think you could see possibly up to two to three inches. But anyway, wet roads icing up is going to be a bigger issue for traveling from 6 p.m. this evening through about 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. So this is the first wave of moisture moving through. It does weaken a little bit here in the overnight, but there's still plenty of off and on wet weather through uh, the better part of tomorrow morning. A slight break midday. And then another big push of rain and snow will be trickling back through the region. Now the majority of this is moving up and over the top of Dillon, but it does cover much of our viewing area, uh, Butte, Bozeman, and many areas in between. So again, uh, another round of wet weather Thursday afternoon into Friday morning, then a short break, and then yet another wave will be moving in throughout the uh, Friday afternoon, Friday evening time frame, and then another break on Saturday, and another wave will be moving in by the time we get to the end of the weekend. Lots of dark ominous clouds out there, not just because it's Halloween, but because we got some snow impact in the region. 34 degrees right now. So far, MSU has only reported about two one hundredths of an inch of uh, moisture out of that snowfall. So it hasn't been excessive, and it certainly has been melting as it hits the ground, and that's the good news. So right now, we're in the cool 20s and 30s and 40s because of the wet weather. But there have been some 40s and 50s in eastern counties of Montana ahead of this storm as of right now. So tonight everyone has a chance for off and on mainly snow, but there could be some raindrops mixed in, but that should taper after midnight out west with lows in the 20s and 30s. Tomorrow I got only 30s and 40s. A few 50s could pop up in the afternoon. Snow levels could go up a little bit, a little higher around 6,000 feet. Northwest winds around 10 to 20. Now as you move south and east, we have a better chance for seeing continued wet weather, at least for the next six hours or so. It should be more of a sporadic hit and miss event into early tomorrow morning, but above 6,000 feet, your mountain passes will be picking up snow and icing is likely. And then tomorrow, mainly mountain snow showers are likely. Snow levels go up a little bit higher, but we'll pick up additional wet weather tomorrow evening and into Friday morning. So again, almost every single day in that extent of forecast, with the exception of a few, has a chance for more rain and or snow but it's a warm and wet weather pattern. So we're staying in the upper 40s and lower 50s Thursday and Friday, but next week we will be cooling into the 40s. Uh, Butte, York Center forecast again, more wet weather Thursday, Friday, a break on Saturday, starting to trend cooler next week, but additional wet weather likely Sunday and into Monday. Dillon, a lower probability for the most part, but you do have some wet weather to look out for Thursday afternoon into Friday morning and then Sunday afternoon into Monday morning. Uh, but 40s and 50s up front, eventually slipping into the upper 30s. West Yellowstone should be mostly snow. And there could be accumulations tonight into tomorrow. Additional accumulations Thursday night into Friday. And then more wet weather Sunday into Monday. Going to be a lot of slick roads out there. Well, Big Sky, I'm sure, is loving it. Uh, they want to get as much snow up there before Thanksgiving. So there is a bonus to it. Okay. There's a silver lining. All right. Well, Nick Petrotoni joins us now. Montana State Football to talk about. They just got a big recruit. Find out who he is. Coming